right, so I just want to do a quick review, um, which is that uh, if you if you think about where we've actually gone from here, so we started out, uh, and at the beginning of this chapter, we realized that uh, um, that the uh, the that systems go to the um, go to the macro state with the largest pro uh, multiplicities. All right, or the largest number of different states uh, that that can exist, and we see that that it turns out that the um, the the number of multiplicities in the most likely macro states are so much larger than even the surrounding the closely surrounding states that we always will see them in this state. And again, we use this to explain why heat always flows from let's say a, a high energy uh, system to a lower energy system. We then use that to define entropy, um, where entropy was just defined as, as um, sorry, uh, where entropy was just defined as KB uh, natural log of the multiplicities. It was just a way to make the multiplicities a little smaller. And we found out that if we actually kind of follow through our whole, um, our whole process, we could actually uh, use uh, this kind of definition of uh, multiplicities and the definition of, of entropy to find temperature and basically to find temperature. And what we found that was one over T um, uh, is, is basically going to be defined as the uh, how much the entropy changes when we change um, uh, when we change our energy. All right. So when we basically exchange energy from one system to another. Um, and we found that, that that actually gives us the actual result that we that we that we desire. Um, the problem that we've been d d dealing with is so far we've been dealing with these uh, isolated systems. So we've been dealing with um, you know basically two Einstein solids basically interacting with each other. Um, you know we put one A and B and put them together and then have them work. But one thing that we've been really ignoring is kind of everything around this system. Uh, uh, we've been kind of saying there has to be an isolated system, which of course doesn't actually exist in real life. So we actually want to try to um, use some of the stuff that we've learned so far to actually start to deal with real, uh, actual real systems. Um, uh, I uh, and I find it actually more useful to think about a specific scenario. So I imagine um, uh, if you imagine our hydrogen atom that we had before, if you ma imagine there's a hydrogen atom. All right, so I'm just going to draw a hydrogen atom over here. There's a there's a hydrogen atom. There's a little electron going around. Um, we know it's not actually what it looks like, but it's good enough for now. Um, and you remember it has energies um, e1, uh, e2, e3, etc. Right? Okay. And remember it has these energies um, that we can do. What we had to realize is that anytime we actually do an experiment, let's say with on a hydrogen atom, it's not just a hydrogen atom in a vacuum. That's nearly impossible to basically create. Um, and so what we do instead is we actually do it uh, when it's in contact with uh, the atmosphere, uh, which surrounds it. Um, and the only thing we need to know about that atmosphere is that what it tends to do is it tends to stay at the same temperature. Um, so kind of no matter what you do with your experiment, you're always kind of surrounded by the, the world and, and on Earth, you're surrounded by, you know, this atmosphere, we all do experiments in places we can breathe. Um, and that atmosphere basically is almost always at a, a, a temperature. And, and you can't really change that temperature that significantly, you know, with your experiment, or you normally do not. Um, and so the idea is that we're going to try to do a, kind of rederive all this stuff that we know about it. But actually now looking at uh, what happens when you have something uh, kind of in contact with a big thing like an atmosphere? Um, and this is kind of how, how books always kind of deal with it, is you talk about two parts. You talk about a system and a reservoir. So the system, in this case, this would be the hydrogen atom. Um, it's small, um, and it has uh, an energy. Let's say the energy of the system is just E. We'll just call that E. And then we put it in contact with this thing called the reservoir. And I was always really confused about the, this idea, and it, it's just this is just a large system. Um, but again, it, normally this is just the um, just the atmosphere. Now, when you're doing stuff with, we actually do the same type of calculation when we do uh, biophysics things like this. Uh, when it's biophysics, the, the the reservoir is actually the body. It's all the water that kind of surrounds your body or surrounds the cell. Uh, but in most of our case, we'll just think about this. Just think of this as the atmosphere is surrounding it. 
and it has a very specific thing, which is it has um, it has a temperature t, and it also has an energy um, uh, which we're going to just call u r for energy of the reservoir u, u of the reservoir. Um, the important thing is about this reservoir is it's so big that the temperature doesn't change. All right, and this is kind of the, the I can spell change. Um, anyway, um, this is the important thing because um, it turns out that knowing that this, the temperature of this thing doesn't change uh, is really important. And again, the reason does, it doesn't change is because this system, the, the system itself is so small compared to the reservoir that the, that the system can't basically affect the reservoir. It's the same thing with you. Like, um, you know, you, you can, uh, you know, whatever, um, you know, light a match uh, inside of, uh, you know, outside, and it's not going to drastically change the temperature around you. Um, and that's, that's basically what this system is. The system is much smaller compared to the actual reservoir. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to ask what we always ask, what's the probability of, let's say, this hydrogen atom. Um, so again, remember, we're, it, I always find it useful to kind of think about an actual system, although the derivation can work for lots of different things. But what's the probability of the, the hydrogen atom being in energy one versus being in, uh, um, uh, they, they, they do it in terms of energy one, energy two. I'm gonna do an or energy zero. Um, so we're gonna say probability of being energy two versus the probability of being in energy one. Okay, so that's the, the kind of whole idea. So what do, so what is the chance of it being in this energy versus in this energy when it's in contact with this system? All right. So um, we know uh, that um, uh, this is going to be um, proportional to, or it's going, to, it's going to be equal to, the multiplicity of the system and the reservoir in the, um, in the second energy level divided by the multiplicity of the system and the reservoir combined in the first energy level. All right, again, this is just building on what we've talked about before, which is that the probability of being in any state is just the multiplicities. Now, the, we can break this up, and obviously the easiest way to do this is to break it up into the, um, the multiplicity of the system in the first, uh, uh, sorry, in the second state, um, times the multiplicity of the reservoir in the second state divided by multiplicity of the system in the first state times the multiplicity of the system or uh, the reservoir in the second state. Okay, again, I haven't, uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm getting the reservoir in the first state. Again, I'm, I'm not doing anything uh, clever here. I'm just, I'm just basically, this is the, just building on stuff we talked about before. Multiplicity of the combined system is just the multiplicity of the two things multiplied together. Um, of course, if we're just talking about a single hydrogen atom, uh, there's only one way. Um, uh, there's only one way of putting it, of of arranging the system in energy two, which is that we we can just put the 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 electron in that in that energy system, and so the um, multiplicity of energy two is just equal to one. Of course, the multiplicity of being in the first energy state is also just one. You can either Put it there or not put it there. That's, uh, you can put it there. That's the only way that you can do it. And so both of the system energies are actually, the multiplicity of the system energies are actually equal to one. And so then if we just kind of rewrite this, We get that the probabilities are equal to, again, now the, both of these are just equal to one, and so we just get um, the multiplicity of the reservoir in state two, or the multiplicity of the reservoir in state one. And again, remember what that means. That's the multiplicity of the of the second uh, of the reservoir whenever the system is in state two, and this is the multiplicity of the reservoir when the system is in state one. Um, again, uh, um, or energy one, you know, let's say. Um, and it, it, I know it sounds weird because you're like, well, how does the how does what state the um, system is in matter um, uh, to the reservoir? Well, the the system actually exchanges energy with the reservoir, and so it turns out that's actually going to be uh, important. Um, we're now going to realize uh, um, uh, that, of course, uh, 
the um the that s so the the entropy we want to write all this in terms of entropy because it turns out it's going to be nicer in that way and again if you just remember the multiplicity of anything or sorry the entropy of anything is just equal to the kb times the natural log of multiplicity and so this is just equal to e to the s r1 divided by kb and this is uh sorry i i, I keep on writing uh, r1 instead of r2 r2 over kb this is e to the s of r1 over kb all right or this is again if you remember how exponents work this is just e to the s r2 minus s r1 divided by kb all right um or you know you can write this as e to the to the delta s r divided by kb all right um so that's that's kind of you know that again just a little bit of of algebra there uh so one thing uh we are going to realize uh, right away is that um we can use again the thing that we talked about earlier which is that remember we want to put things in terms of temperature and we had this expression now what we can do is um we can actually realize well if t isn't changing that much these uh we can actually integrate these up and again you don't have to do this this is actually the, a really simple integral though which is that you just get uh one over t if we multiply the the partial with respect to u and do it this way those partials if nothing else is changing just become actual derivatives and if this is a constant we just take the um, integral on both sides and we get that uh one over t times delta u is equal to delta s all right or delta u over t is equal to delta s well the great news is we have a delta s up here right so we're going to get the probability of e2 over e1 is just equal to uh e to the delta u of the reservoir uh divided by kbt now that's really great we made lots of really good progress but the problem is uh, we don't actually want to do this in terms of the reservoir uh, we want to actually do it in terms of the system because actually calculating the change in uh, energy of the reservoir is extremely difficult to do um, calculating anything about the reservoir is extremely uh, difficult to do because of course the atmosphere is really big and it takes uh, a lot of um uh, you know there are lots of things happening in it um the good news is we don't actually have to uh so the if you look back at our actual system our system i should have actually drawn the system kind of in the middle because what what in reality happens is it's not that the system is just attached right here the system is actually surrounded by the reservoir at all times right in other words the reservoir is actually the rest of the universe um uh and the system uh is just the system and so anything that isn't the system is the reservoir and that's important because what it means is that um anytime i have a change in energy of the system all right that's just energy so let's say i lose the system loses some energy um that's just it just gives the energy to the reservoir and so it turns out the change in energy of the system is just equal to opposite the change of the energy of the reservoir again that just means that any energy that's get taken or given from the system is just taken or, or given or taken to the reservoir so now we can actually just plug that into there and we just get the, the probability of e2 over probability of e1 is equal to e to the minus change in energy of the system divided by kvt all right which is a pretty nice little equation now if you remember of course though uh this is just um this is just e to the minus uh e2 minus e1 divided by kvt So, and we can actually just split that back up again. So we get that the probability of E2 over the probability of E1 is just equal to E to the minus E2 over KBT 
divided by e to the minus e1 over kbt. Or the more general answer, which is that any, the probability of being, because there's nothing special about this state, these states that we picked. I we just picked a random state, E2 and E1. It turns out the probability is always going to be equal or, or proportional to this factor. And so the probability of being in any energy state, all right, is always going to be proportional to E to the minus, whatever that energy is, divided by KBT. And it turns out this is actually the really exciting part of this. Um, we can actually put it in terms of a constant. Um, and again, I just want to make sure before I actually, before I go on, I just want to make sure it's clear what we're talking about this. This just says that the probability of being in a state is just equal to minus the energy of the state divided by KBT. Again, it's only proportional to, to it though. We need to put it to actually get an equality. We, we need to put in a constant. So we're just going to put in a constant, which is one over Z. And there's a reason for that, but it's not, it won't, it's not quite obvious yet. Um, now, uh, we know that the probability of being, uh, uh, so, so the probability of being in any state, so if we sum over all states, um, and the probability of being in any energy EI has to be equal to one. In other words, it has to be in some state, all right? Um, and so we can actually sum over all of these states, um, and we get that, uh, so it's a sum over all states, uh, e to the minus EI divided by KBT. All right, so we can do that, and this will actually allow us to find Z, it turns out. Well, it, it allows us to find it because this Z is actually co a constant again, and so we just get one over Z, E to the minus EI divided by KBT. Oh, oh sorry, I've lost my sum. Uh, uh, so we can pull the, the Z out of the sum. And if you notice, we've actually just solved this. We get that one, so if I just take this term and connect it directly to this term, we get one is equal to one over Z, E to the minus EI divided by KB, sorry, I keep forgetting my sum. Uh, one over Z times the sum over all states, E to the minus EI divided by KBT. Um, and what this tells us, if I just multiply by Z over th there, is that Z, is the sum over all states of e to the minus i over kbt. And so it turns out we can always find the probability of any state, the probability of any state, um, uh, you know, probability uh, ei, let's say, is just, or, or probability of e is just equal to, oh, sorry, it's just equal to e to the minus e divided by kbt divided by z, where z is just the sum over all states, e to the minus ei divided by kbt. So what that means in, in practice is that if I ever want to actually find the probability of being in a certain state, I calculate this, this is called the Boltzmann factor. All right, it's just the Boltzmann factor. So I calculate the Boltzmann factor for the energy state that I'm interested in, and then I also calculate it for all other states, um, including that one. I add them all up, and if I divide it by that, that, that sum of all the ones below, then I get the total probability. And that's actually how I find the probability of any state, which is pretty cool because now I can just take anything that's, you know, any hydrogen atom that's in uh, contact with a, 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 um, a, a temperature reservoir, uh, or I can take, you know, a, a harmonic oscillator that's in contact with, you know, that's just sitting around in, in space, uh, you know, in contact with, uh, with the atmosphere. And I can actually calculate what uh, state it is in and what the proportion of states of it being in those different states are just by knowing uh, what its energy is and what the temperature is. And I'll show you a calculation of that uh, in the next video.